Don't worry, being young as a Supreme Court Justice means 49 years old, not 19 or 26. So don't worry about that. Um, I essentially live in the world of ideas, and when I was asked to give one word to describe a society that is so pervasively digital, that word that I thought about and given to me by your sponsors, or by your organizers, is the word reification. Reification. I think you have to look at the dictionary in order to uh, find its meaning. Don't worry, that is what lawyers are for. We uh, give you very difficult words. But reification means taking an idea, something abstract, and making it concrete. That is the usual definition of reification. However, in your classes in philosophy, they speak about reification as actually a fallacy. To mistake what is, what is abstract, as an ideal or an idea as something which is the, the reality. Um, Alfred uh, White Northhead calls it the fallacy of uh, misplaced concreteness, which means that you mistake in, a, in an old cliche the map for the territory, the representation for the reality. Now, before I go into why I chose reification, let me clarify that I am not against abstractions or ideas. After all, there are many things as human beings that you need to think about, that you create ideas for, that you try to give meaning of. For instance, the narrative about yourself, who you are. As uh, the, the speaker before me said, how do you consider yourself as Filipino? You pick certain ideas, you privilege certain facts that has happened in your lives, and then you weave it into what you call an autobiography. You create a narrative of your life. You create a story of your life. And like all fiction, in order to create good sentences, good paragraphs, good, a good essay, what you have to do is exclude some, but include the others, privilege some, and background, background some of the facts that have happened in your life. And normally, whenever we want to make a good presentation to somebody that you are dating or a good presentation to a professor or a teacher in, the, in, the, uh, in this uh, college, then what you, what you need to do is foreground the, thing, the good things that you've done and then background the things that you want to hide. And that is what is called choosing and creating a narrative of yourself. You create an abstraction and explain it to yourself. Now. Imagine doing that for an entire society. Imagine an entire society reproducing itself in the form of ideas, reproducing itself in an accumulation of ideas, a grouping of ideas which we shall now refer to as culture. Culture is nothing but the way a society thinks about itself, the way that a society reflects on itself, the same way that humans have consciousness because they can think about themselves by choosing certain, certain facts, privileging them, them, giving meaning to it, the same with the society, creating a culture. But you know, cultures are always contested. There are dominant ways by which we can explain who we are as a community, as a society, as an identity, or as a group. But there are also certain portions of society which say that that is not supposed to be the way that we create ideas for ourselves. And in many ways, our culture is encoded on us by many things. For example, schools. For example, science tells us what we are. You know, when I went to high school, we were taught that there are three states of matter. Solid, liquid, and gas. Tatlulang. Today, you are told, I think, in your curricula, that there are at least four states of matter, at least. Panahon namin, at most three. Solid, liquid, gas, and if I'm not mistaken, science teachers, please do not give me a failing grade, plasma. But then when I googled it again this morning, I found out that there are other different states of matter under very exigent circumstances. For example, the Bose-Einstein condensate at very low temperatures. Who is Bose? Who is Einstein? Wag yun ang tanungin sa akin, nabasa ko lang sa Wikipedia. Okay, second is a neutrino deficient matter, which means a, uh, an, an entity with such high density, it creates this form of matter. And the third one that I just memorized is the quantum gold. 
plasma, which is under conditions of very high energy. Science as we knew it before, encoded in us, making us understand the physical world, was only three states. Today, it becomes more. And science changes by means of the falsification, the idea of falsification. Meaning to say that you have a theory creating a hypothesis and you try to falsify it. If you can, then you, can re you should revise your theory. Ideas change, ideas thus evolve. There are many institutions in our society which produce ideas for us, creating culture. For example, our families. For example, journalism. And for example, law. Law creates norms which tell you what you should follow and what you should not follow. And easily, people jump to the conclusion that just because it is legal, it is necessarily, necessarily, necessarily right. But just because it is legal, of course it is necessary, otherwise police will accost you. But just because it is legal does not necessarily mean it is just or legitimate. Why? That's why you have Congress, because they keep on amending the law. That's why you have a Supreme Court, because they interpret the law in the light of the text of the law, given contemporary circumstances with the demands of social justice. The ideas likewise change. Therefore, culture will always have a subversive element in it. But wait a minute. What happens when the entire discussion consists only of one side of an idea? What happens if the challengers, the subversives, cannot get into a conversation? When that happens, then you can have what is called an echo chamber or an epistemic bubble. There is a difference between the two, I will not get into that. But that happens when you speak only to people that, are, that have the same ideas as you. You speak to the same people that see the world as you do. Why? Because it is comfortable. Why? Because for you it works. Ladies and gentlemen, social media is a large echo chamber, a large epistemic bubble. It is created that way, not by your choice. It is created that way because that is the way that it is set up by people that own social media. They want you on it. They want you on it every second of the day, if, if possible. And the only way that you are on it is because you like the things that, are, that you see in your wall or in your Twitter feed or Facebook wall or Instagram uh, photos. They check for you. They remove by means of an algorithm, the things that they predict you do not like. They add more of the things that you like. So what are you left with? You are left with a discussion of people of kindred minds. What if everyone says within your, your feed that being white is good, that being lesbian is to be an aberration, that being gay or uh, belong to the LGBT community is to be a minority? What if they tell you that being a legitimate child means that you are yourself the illegitimate child? Because of course, you're not an illegitimate child. What happened was your parents uh, created you out of the benefit of wedlock, but that does not make you illegitimate. That makes you a human being. But what if the label that is given to you is a legitimate child, and that is what the discussion is all about? What if that entire epistemic bubble tells you that to hate a certain group is good, that a certain religion is better than any other religion, or vice versa, that being atheist is to be very rational and very ethical? Okay, now, have that. What if most people within a country, within an entire society, within a body politic, what if most people do not get their news from journalism, but get their news from that epistemic bubble. You create citizens that have only one way of looking at things, things which are comfortable to them, things which are to the status quo privilege. Because it is comfortable, therefore it is privilege. Because you consult social media more often than you do now, newspapers. Because you consult social media more than you read Supreme Court decisions. Of course, I do not uh, invite you to read our opinions uh, because it is very difficult. Because you consult social media rather than read a good book, rather than read Homer or Dante 
or Socrates, or for that matter, any good writer in fiction, Jane Austen, uh, Sol Bello, or whatever. Because you consult social media so often, your minds are shaped no longer by only family, no longer by only uh, uh, schools, but ma majority of it is created and shaped by social media. Now you have a situation where you can assert freedom of expression, except that the freedom of expression is only within a theater of people thinking similarly. And therefore, you do not get the benefit of freedom of expression, which is that it's supposed to be the best truth, the best mechanism to arrive at the truth. Why? Because there is no dissent. There is nobody that is out there. So this is my challenge. To prevent reification from happening, you have to learn to become uncomfortable. And uncomfortable means to put down your cell phone, to put down your computers, to put down your digital device and write things on a piece of paper like myself. Of course, I put it down this morning just to be able to tell you that I can write on a piece of paper for that matter. To be uncomfortable means to sit with somebody and take care to listen to the ideas, to tolerate the ideas. Freedom of expression by law is a right. But in terms of humanity, it is not only a right, but it is a privilege that you are granted because you can speak or you have the resources to amplify your voice, but it is likewise a responsibility. We will be saved as a society only with a citizenry that is enlightened, critical, and compassionate. Without being enlightened, critical, and compassionate, we are doomed. And we are doomed if all we look for are our comforts, our comforts in ideas among, among other things. Now, do I see the potential? Do I see the potential of citizens that can become enlightened, critical, and compassionate? And my easy answer there is yes. I see it now in the audience in St. Jude. You will become the citizens of the future. Just put your phone down, talk to somebody, examine the ideas, be critical, be compassionate, and we will have an enlightened society. Reification is bad. To question what is reified is actually good. Be critical. Thank you very much.